French minister calls for security at mosques after attack. So obviously we are celebrating, you know, the security for all. The security part, not the yeah, attack part. Not not the attack part. Yeah, it was yeah, okay. Just to make that clear. Um on April 11th, members of the local Muslim community in the western city of Rene discovered graffiti insulting Islam and the Prophet Muhammad on a mosque and a Muslim cultural center. The graffiti references the graffiti references restarting the Crusades and a call for Catholicism to be made the state religion. France's interior minister, Gerald Darmanin, has ordered more comprehensive security for Muslim sites of worship after vandals defaced the walls of the mosque days before the start of Ramadan. Darmanin stated, quote, freedom of worship in France is a fundamental freedom. The door of a mosque was destroyed by arsonists on the night of April 15th in the western city of uh, Nantes. President of the National Observatory Against Islamophobia, Abdallah uh, Zekri, criticized what he called an anti-Islam climate. Um, I just want to make one comment. I It's so interesting that this person said making f Catholicism the state religion of France because it was and it may actually still be on the books i don't know despite the laissez-te but i'm just like do you not realize where you live person you know like i mean the crusades and all of that the enlightenment was a rejection of all of that and most of french law literature uh, their philosophy their thinking you know i just find it so it's just prejudice but then the other thing is that so now so many places of worship in France have to have security. Now, I don't know if it's going to take to the level that they have at synagogues, but, you know, it's just really sad to me that all these people need, you know, guards in order to go do whatever it is they do or want to do. You know, if I was fighting against segregation and a spread of radical views coming from Islam in my country, I would go out of my way to make Muslims feel as safe as possible. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then that means that you probably want more blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest blasphemous art available today. So if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook that's blasphemousart.com slash ebook sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy what could be better so make sure you sign up link below just to be able to show the difference between fighting ideas and fighting groups of people like if you want to because you can't you can tell people, like, a lot of people don't understand this, no matter how much we tell them, right? We tell people, like, you know what? We hate your ideas, but we want to protect your rights. We want to defend you as humans. We support you as humans. We think yeah, you have the right to believe whatever you want to believe. We will fight those ideas, but we don't fight your rights to believe in those ideas. We want your security. We want your safety. We want your happiness. You could challenge our ideas. We challenge your ideas. But saying these things, it doesn't work, right? Like, a lot of... A lot of you know, Muslims and non-Muslims don't understand the difference between us attacking them as individuals or us attacking their ideas, right? So instead of talking about it, you have to show, the only way to demonstrate that is to show it, right? And given how hard that is to, to for people to understand, you have to, I think, do extra to show it. Like you have to, if I was like in charge of France, I would be going heavy, heavy against Islamic indoctrination of children, like so aggressive. 
But at the same time, I will signal to Muslims that as much as I plan, as much as I can, that they are French, that they that this is their country, that and that if people if anybody is coming at you to hurt you, you will be protected. You, I want every Muslim in France to feel like they have their own personal. Every Muslim has their own. I'm exaggerating, but um, I want every Muslim in France to feel like the the government is providing them with their own personal bodyguard everywhere they go. I want Muslims in France to feel that they are the safest Muslims on this planet. Like no Muslim anywhere in the world is as safe as a Muslim that lives in France. That's what I want them to feel like. Anyway, Susanna. Well, it's actually uh, very fitting that you say that because, um, so this person who gave a uh, comment and who was addressing reporters um, is the Minister of Interior, Gerald Darman, and who, if you guys have been following the um, anti-separatism bills that have been put forth in France, uh, Gerard Darmanin is one of the most vocal proponents of these anti-separatism bills. Like most of the conversation surrounding these bills reports involve him, his statements on it. Like he's a very key figure in these anti-separatism bills, you know, which are to fight Islamism. Right. So he's also the same guy who, if you scroll down in this article, you can see a little embedded tweet. Um, but the translation is he's saying, I am in Rene this evening to demonstrate the government's solidarity with the Muslims of our country, the anti-Muslim inscriptions that have been inscribed on this cultural and religious center are unacceptable. And then once again, freedom of France is a fundamental freedom. Freedom of worship in France is a fundamental freedom. Um, freedom of he all said ideas. He, uh, yeah, and then he continued saying he has asked the French uh, police in the uh, and like uh, local forces that police smaller towns and rural areas to strengthen vigilance around Muslim places at worship and at the dawn of Ramadan. Um, so I think it it this is a really good thing to hear coming from him, especially since he is such a vocal proponent and key figure in the anti-Islamist separatism um, legislation. I also think that's a really good way also to make people understand what secularism does for religious people. It's not just, we're not talking about state atheism and no one should believe anything. No, secularism is the best protection that religious people have in terms of their safety, their rights to, you know, believe, to gather, to worship. Because it's giving everyone the liberties that they should enjoy as a human being, you know. And I, I think it's a really good way to show them what you were saying, Armin, you know, you want to feel safe. Yes, you have the force of the law of this country behind you in your right to believe or worship or think what you want to think. Just like you should have the force of the law behind the country to support you to say whatever you think. That's different than incitement. Okay, let's make sure people understand that. I want to be clear. But that's what secularism does for people. It gives them the security that they deserve. And I think this is a really good way to make that point. Right. Um, cool. Um, I wait. Uh, Marcy, why every time I see Marcy's name, I feel like America. Like okay, <laughs> Merck. Ar Merck. Uh, Armin, the idealism you talk about may not work for religion because different religions don't understand secularism and are combative to other faiths, so it may not work. Uh, well, here's the thing: uh, religions are not people. Um, religious people completely have better are not just one dimensional robots that that understand nothing but the religion religious people are fully capable of understanding things that are beyond just their religion 
um, people are not just influenced only by their religion and nothing else. People are multidimensional and they're affected by many, many different things. So even if the con certain concepts don't ex exist within a religion, that doesn't mean that the religious people are beyond um, beyond understanding certain concepts. Um, I also, uh, yeah, go on. I just wanted to respond to what you said or to Marcy's comment that I think actually secularism will work because it shows all these different religious groups, whether they're combative with each other or not, or they don't like each other, that everyone is protected by the law to do and think as they please. So whether you like me or not doesn't matter. I'm protected from attacks and harassment and bigotry and all these things just as you are actually Rivka you're so right because uh, maybe not always but maybe not in France but in many many cases religious people are the first people to understand the value of secularism when they're the minority right it's usually usually religious people are anti I know friends in France is different uh, but usually religious people are anti-secularism when their religion is the majority but secularism is something that r religious minorities definitely understand the value of because they are in direct benefit of it um so yeah and, and i think they're in re the reason why people in certain countries like france might not understand that value of secularism is because of the segregation right so even if you're a minority um you feel like a majority because you're in your own community so you don't understand the value and protections that secularism might bring to you um so that's why france might be a di different again i don't actually know don't quote me on that because this is my guess it's my hypothesis i don't know that if that is true i'm just guessing i do want to mention my annoyance with this al jazeera article um the fact that they put this under the Islamophobia category, the fact that they even have that category annoys the crap out of me. I really like the idea, the fact that it, Canadian politicians were um, understood how problematic this wording is. Like we had, um, like I didn't even know that this meaningless of the word Islamophobia got to the point in Canada, at least that certain politicians openly came and said, can we not put the, have a bill that mentions Islamophobia? Can we yeah. change that to anti-Muslim bigotry instead of Islamophobia? So that shows that what a high, like high level of discourse that like a lot of people think that when we say Islamophobia is a bad term, we're, as they think like we're denying the existence of anti-Muslim bigotry. We're not. As anti-Muslim bigotry is a major problem, but this whole phrasing of Islamophobia has been very useful to people to a lot of people who try to blur the lines between what it means to attack certain groups of people versus attacking certain ideology because they're using the word Islam here instead of the word Muslim here. So this is a very, very, this wording is very dangerous. And I actually clicked on that. And guess what? We should actually cover this. I clicked on it. They have a whole category of Islamophobia, and this was under that. And the, <laughs> and the main first one is new, about Quilliam. The main news I have under uh, Islamophobia is Quilliam, the, the closing of Quilliam. And says the Quilliam Foundation has closed, but its toxic legacy remains. We should cover this. Yeah. We should cover this. I don't know if on its own stream or as part of a new segment, but we should cover this. Rifka, you had your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, agree with what you were saying about the word Islamophobia. And also, I think that people who are so concerned that anytime you criticize the religion or uh, you know, question the ideas is, you know, oh, you're, you're against Muslims. You're supporting bigotry. What they don't realize is they're actually doing the work of these fundamentalists for them. And they're putting people in the boxes that they say the people who are criticizing ideas are doing, because what that does is it makes everyone and the fundamentalists want you to believe is that all Muslims are religious. All Muslims are concerned about Islam. Everybody from a 
Islamic country uh, has to be a religious person, has to be in agreement with all these precepts. It's like a secular blasphemy law. So, you know, in Pakistan, they can throw you in jail or kill you for blasphemy. In the West, they'll shame you into shutting up. Yeah. And one thing I liked about the article was actually the uh, interior minister's quote. He specifically says anti-Muslim attacks. So I was like, he's onto it. Got a good egg here. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of those policies. Hey guys, YouTube has fully demonetized our channel for supposedly hateful and harmful conduct um, without telling us what we did wrong. Um, if we get to 1,000 patrons, we will be able to keep paying all our team, our editors, our artists without ever having to worry about monetization again, which would be amazing. Yay! So please support Atheist Republic on Patreon. Link in the description below.